So in order to do many problems in physics, you need to be able to use trigonometry. Uh, in physics, uh, as you're going to see in future videos, uh, it's useful to be able to break things into components uh, in the x and y direction. So if I have a force that, as an angle, we can look at how much of it is this way and how much of it is this way. Um, and what we get a lot of is ray triangles. Um, so a uh, primer on ray triangle trigonometry uh, is, very, is important and useful. So let's get started. So a right triangle is any triangle that has a 90 degree angle. So this is usually indicated by a little bit of a, a little box in the corner of the triangle where the right angle is. So this is a right triangle. Um, you can then label uh, the sides of the triangle. We'll label A, B, and C. Uh, and we're going to say that we have an angle, which I'm going to call theta, right here. Theta is this kind of O, swirly O with the line through it. Um, we generally use uh, Greek letters to write the angles of a triangle. Um, that's why we're using that. So uh, the rules for a triangle, uh, there are three important ones that you should keep in mind. First, um, the angles inside add to 180 degrees. Actually, that's, uh, yes. Second one uh, is the Pythagorean theorem, which states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. That's the second rule you'll need. Um, and then the other two rules I have uh, are more about geometry in general as opposed to just right triangles. Um, but a lot of times you're going to see uh, these right triangles in, in conjunction with other forms and figures, and you're going to be able to use these. So, uh, let's say the third uh, is that angles on a line add to 180 degrees. Uh, to give an example of that, I mean if I have a line like this and I have a line like that, then these two angles need to add to 180. So maybe this one is... Uh, Sorry, maybe this one is 120 degrees, and maybe this is 60 degrees, for example. And the fourth and final thing to remember is that opposite angles are equal. Uh, and, in, and when you're talking about angles, we say they're congruent. To give an example of that, you have an X then these two angles are equal, and these two angles are equal. So, these are the four rules we're going to use to um, kind of guide us through our um, foray into uh, geometry and trig. Um, and we're also going to be looking at trigonometric functions in a little bit, but first let me look at an example where we, we apply some of this. Suppose we have a drawing, um, maybe we have something like this. Let's say we have this. Let's say we have that. Let's say this is 30 degrees. Let's say this is 60 degrees in the corner here. And then we want to find, uh, this is a right triangle, so this is 90. And we want to find uh, the other angles in the triangle. So, and outside of it. So we want to find, I'll call this 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. So we'll start, we'll just go in order. Angle one, we can look and say, oh, well, we have a straight line and a line like that, and the angles on a straight line need to add to 180. So this is going to be equal to 180 minus whatever angle's in here, which is 30. So one, angle one is 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, and is equal to 150 degrees. So we have 150 here. Angle 2, well, that's the third angle in our triangle. And we know that the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So we have 90 plus 30 is 120. So angle 2 is going to be 180 minus 120 degrees. And that's going to equal 60 degrees. So angle 2 is 60 degrees. Angle 3 is going to be um, equal to angle 2 because of number 4. Opposite angles are congruent. 
here we can see that this makes a perfect x. These lines continue. They don't jut off at an angle when they continue past. So angle 3 equals uh, angle 2, which is equal to 60 degrees. Angle 4, well, angle 4, we have another triangle here. And this rule that angles add to 180 is not just for right triangles. It's for all triangles. So angle 4 is going to be, we know angle 3 is 60. This angle is 60. So angle 4 is going to be 180 minus 60 minus 60 is equal to 60 degrees. Angle 5, well, angle 5 is going to be equal to one of two things, uh, actually both of them, uh, but you can use either one to get the answer. So angle 5 is on a straight line both with angle 2 and with angle 3, right? So it means that it's going to be 180 minus angle 2 or 3, but they equal each other. So angle 5 is going to be 180 minus 60 equals 120 degrees. And finally, angle 6 is opposite angle 5, um, and you can see that again. Nothing weird happens. They don't jut off in the angles, so they're equal to each other. Uh, so angle 6 equals uh, angle 5, uh, which is equal to 120 degrees. And that's how we would go about solving a somewhat complex geome geometric arrangement of, of triangles as shown. Um, one important note to make is I say that opposite angles are equal to each other. Uh, but keep in mind that it has to be a continuous line that doesn't change direction or slope or anything like that. If I have something that looks like this, in this case, this angle does not equal this angle, nor does this angle necessarily equal this angle, even though it might kind of look like it does. Um, only in a case where you have intersecting lines and remember, a line is a constant slope. Anytime you have intersecting lines, you'll have the opposite angles being equal. Just want to make that clear. So, now that we've covered uh, some of the rules we'll need, now we can get into the more interesting uh, trigonometry. Uh, we're going to look at the trigonometric functions, three of them, today. So, the ratios of sides of a triangle, uh, of a right triangle, are going to be the same no matter what, for any given angle. So what I mean by that is if I have a triangle here, let's say A, B, C, well, A over B, uh, B over C, and A over B are always, always, always going to be in the same ratio if some angle is set. And this is a uh, we really have two angles set because we also have the 90. Always going to be the same. And it turns out these ratios have names. So, let's say our angle is just a general theta, so it's some angle, you know, it could be anything. Uh, we pick theta, uh, we call the sine of theta, which we write sin theta, is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle uh, and is always opposite the 90 degree angle. So C is going to be our hypotenuse and A is going to be opposite. So in this case, it's equal to A over C. Now, don't get confused because it's not always going to be equal to if you label a triangle A, B, and C, A over C. If this angle was up here, what would the opposite over hypotenuse be? Well, if theta was, was here, sine of theta would be B over C because here B is opposite from that angle not A. So as opposed to, you know, try to remember what these ratios are, and not with A, C, or B, or anything, but remember opposite over hypotenuse, because that's what's going to be useful to you, because you know what the word opposite means. Clearly, A is the side opposite that angle. B is the side opposite this angle. Um, the cosine, which you write COS of theta, is equal to adjacent, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So what angle, what side is adjacent to this angle? Well, B is, okay? And we know C is the hypotenuse, so it's B over C. But again, if I was interested in angle up here, then the adjacent side would be A, and the hypotenuse would still be C. Hypotenuse never changes, but A and B are going to switch depending on what angle you're interested in. The last relation we have is the tangent. And the tangent of theta 
is equal to the opposite, which I'll just write OPP, over the adjacent, which I'll write as ODJ. So in this case, opposite over adjacent is equal to A over B. But if I was interested in the tangent of this angle, it would be B over A. So, um, you know, it might be difficult to remember all of these uh, ratios. So we have an acronym. Uh, we underline the first letter of each of these. And we have SOKATOA. SOKATOA. Uh, this is universally kind of used as the reminder for what sine is. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. Commit this to memory, commit, the, commit this acronym to memory, and you'll be good. Um, so these three ratios that we're going to use, there's also uh, three more ratios, where basically you just flip these. Um, so for example, the cosecant uh, is equal to hypotenuse over opposite, and is equal to 1 over sine. The secant is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and is 1 over cosine. And the cotangent is equal to... Um, 1 over tangent is equal to um, adjacent over opposite. Uh, but we're not going to really bother ourselves with those. Um, one relation that is useful to have is that tangent is a special function. Not only is it equal to opposite over adjacent, it's also equal to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. And you can see that because sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, if we divide by cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, um, then we multiply them together, this one's flipped, so the hypotenuses cancel and we have opposite over adjacent. So tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So anytime you see sine over cosine, you can just replace it with the tangent. So this is a useful thing to know. So let's see how we actually go about using this. Um, suppose, let's see, suppose we have a triangle This will be our right angle. This theta is going to be the angle we're interested in. Uh, and then let's say this uh, length of this side is A, and this is unknown, X. And I want to find the length of this side, but I only have the angle and the length of the hypotenuse. Well, the first thing you're going to do is identify which trigonometric function to use. You're interested in the opposite angle, and you have the hypotenuse. So which of these has opposite, opposite and hypotenuse? Sine does. So the sine of theta, you're just going to write down the relation. Sine of theta is equal to opposite, which is x, divided by hypotenuse, which is a in this case. And remember, I'm using the letter a. I can use the letter q. I can use a smiley face. I can use anything I want. Generally, you see a, b, c in a triangle. But when you are looking for different things and you don't have all the sides, they might use anything. So here, solving for x, we're just going to multiply both sides by a. And you see that x is equal to a sine theta. And you're good. Um, let's switch this triangle around a little bit. Suppose instead I have uh, this is x and this is q. I want to find x, but I'm given q. So here, we want to find the adjacent side to the angle, and we're given the opposite. So we want opposite and adjacent. Well, opposite and hypotenuse is not what we want. Adjacent, but hypotenuse don't want it. Opposite over adjacent, we're going to use tangent. So you're just going to write down the tangent relation in this triangle. So tangent of theta is equal to opposite, which is q, divided by adjacent, which is x. So here, this looks a little bit different than the last fraction we have. You have to multiply both sides by x. So we have x times the tangent of theta is equal to q. And then you're going to divide by tangent of theta to get x by itself. So x is then equal to q divided by the tangent of theta. And that's our answer. So let's look at a, in a triangle where we want to just solve it completely. So suppose, uh, suppose I have theta. Uh, let's suppose I'm given um, that this is a, this is B, and suppose that that's all I'm going to give you. So we want to find the last angle in here, which I'll call alpha, 
and we also want to find the length of this side, which I'll call c. So, to do that, uh, well, let's do the angle first. So the angles in triangle have to add to 180, which means that alpha is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees from the right angle minus theta. So alpha is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So we've got our alpha. C, well we know the Pythagorean theorem says that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So to find C, we can take the square root of both sides and get C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. And keep in mind that you can't split this up. This is not equal to A plus B. The, it's the square root of A squared plus B squared cannot be simplified. So we have our sides. Good. So now what we want to do is, uh, that's actually it. Um, that's the triangle solved. We didn't actually need to use a trick. But now what I want to do is uh, evaluate the three trigonometric functions for both of these, um, these angles. So doing so, let's do it. So the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have our opposite, and the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So sine of theta is equal to a over square root of a squared plus b squared. Cosine of theta, uh, well, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is equal to b divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. Because remember, this is what c is, square root of a squared plus b squared. Last thing we have is tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we have opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is just a divided by b. Good. Um, so we've evaluated it for theta. Um, and that's what uh, I wanted to do with this triangle. Um, so we're all set. Now, the symbolic notation might be a little off-putting at first, um, but this is generally how you're going to do it for anything. Um, I will give you, let's do an example with actual numbers, um, because you will have some of those too. Um, so let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's say I have uh, 37 degrees and I have uh, 5 and I want to find the length of the hypotenuse. So first step is to identify what function we're going to use. So we're interested, we have the opposite side length and we want the hypotenuse. So opposite hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. So the sine of 37 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 5, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. So then we're going to multiply both sides by x. So we have x times sine of 37 degrees is equal to 5. Then we divide by sine 37, and we have that x is equal to 5 divided by the sine of 37 degrees. And we can put that into our calculator. If we can get some answer, uh, that will be a, a number. Um, and we're good. So this is, these are just a few examples of how we're going to use uh, trigonometry to solve these right triangles. Um, and as you go forward, you'll see that these are very useful tools um, to have in physics because so many physical systems uh, do involve having angles. Um, and it's nice to be able to set up a right triangle and then break it down and figure out what uh, all the components are, what all the sides are, what angles are happening. Um, it'll be a very useful tool for our studies.